It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports, where Mexico City will play host to a different kind of football. It's the Vikes and the Rams on EA Sports. From the oldest capital city in the Americas, founded in 1325, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Mexico City. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Minnesota Vikings and the Los Angeles Rams. And no run back on the opening kickoff. will come out to the 25. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. And a look here at their go-to guy under center. And what's a quarterback's best friend? Balance? I think you're right. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, a lot of guys would say great receiver, right? A terrific offensive line. But I agree with you, balance, because if you can run the ball effectively, that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages to read. And they said balance will be a focus in this one. Yeah, they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders, I don't believe. I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off. The run on first down gets him a couple up to the 27. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? We love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Here's second and eight. His throw incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. He'll drop to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Charles' first drive here, a little safe completion underneath, maybe get some rhythm, get your feet wet, so to speak. I agree, and I like it because it's a lot like a basketball game when you're getting started and you pass the ball around so everyone touches it early and gets involved in the game. In this case, it's not just dumping it to a back and he's able to run with the ball, but you get your offensive linemen involved because they get to get out and run and hit people in the open field, everyone getting their feet wet early. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Four yards remain for second down. He'll look to throw. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Back to throw. Open man here is Prohl. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield strike at the 49. That throw's not going to get him a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talk to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive a lot. Third down conversion here is big. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break.
The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On the ground with a tight end. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Second and 11 now. They'll set up to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And this is gonna turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 28. And the hitch route has run really well. That jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space. All you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. He'll look to throw. Oh, a strip. The ball comes out. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. So now the Rams send out the field goal team here. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And this one is right through. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, OK, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do, lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. Foreman to start the drive. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he 
goes, folded like a lawn chair. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it second down and 11. Now a give right side. Foreman and the Rams defense gets to him again behind the line of scrimmage. Third down, now even tougher. Third and 13 after that loss of a yard. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a beat on the play, get a running start, and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Throwing here, Lee. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, that was because of the pass interference call, but for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? Not a good one, let me tell you. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now a give right side. Foreman. Yeah, give him four yards there in the second and six. I feel like I can see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Six yards left on second down. Now a give right side. Foreman. And it's still about three yards shy of the first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Lee. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. First down, lead to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before, and I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it, so they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. Foreman, and he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A three-yard touchdown run, and the Vikings have taken the lead. Just power football there, down near the goal line. Give it to him, he's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible, but all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. 
Now the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with a three-yard scoring run. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Going to give this time to the tailback. And the running lane's non existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on their early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and ten. They're going to look to throw. And he will find his man on the end round. Complete. Let's go. Let's go. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3. Our score. Coming up in a couple of minutes' time, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman, the coach in our EA Sports studios. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But it looked like a Rams player was able to get his hands on it. Yes, yeah, so they will hold on to the football indeed. Second time in this game, Charles. The ball has squirted out from his hands. Luckily, his teammate was there to pounce on it. You're right. Got the lucky bounce, able to retain possession. You know, we often talk about the combine and why do we measure quarterbacks' hands? Is that really a big deal? It's for situations like this. Do you have the hands big enough and strong enough to hold on to the football while being jostled? So they keep the football, but now face second and long. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Again, he'll drop to throw. And that is incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully.
Here comes the Rams punter now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. Still more than a minute to go, so there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines, hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now Lee. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Whoa. Just inside the 10, back at the Seven. 9. Seven. The perennial pro bowler Aaron Donald gets the sack. He seemed to have a reasonable amount of time in the pocket, but he couldn't get rid of the football, and the end result, Charles, him on the ground. Yeah, he's got to keep an internal clock to go along with his offensive line. When you're talking about three, four, five seconds, that's a reasonable amount of time to expect to deliver the ball downfield. So great to try and complete a pass, but it's equally important to know when to throw the football away, too. They don't want to repeat a first down. They'll keep it on the ground. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. Once again, they'll keep it on the ground. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? Now the Rams will signal for a timeout, their second, as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. The Vikings send out their punter as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And with decent starting field position, there may be only a couple completions away from field goal range. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. Second and four. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to loft this one deep left sideline. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Vikings in that first half. And even though they've got the lead, they're likely going over ways they can improve the running game as they didn't find a whole lot of success in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Rams, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. 
Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. as we are underway in the second half. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. And the Vikings set to go on offense to begin the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. Well, they always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Again, it's Foreman. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Here's Foreman. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, this is the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A carry for Foreman. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now a give right side. Foreman, and he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Here's Lee to throw. Stride complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. In this case, he picks up a first down. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. This is Foreman, draw play. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. throw Lee throwing left side here and it's complete 
And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams 37. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Working with second and five now. They'll try the left side. Foreman and only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Lee looks to throw. That's going to be caught by Moss. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense. And he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. John McVay unhappy on the sidelines visibly. He's made the decision to reach for the red flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Come on, baby. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now Foreman. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. 44 yards on the ground for him so far. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Ideal spot here to get a first down and try to run some more clock. And this is second and less than a yard. They run again with Foreman. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. Well, that makes this a two-score ball game. And, you know, the way this thing has been going, Charles, two scores kind of feels like three or four scores. Yeah, it's a great observation. It's been a heck of a battle, hasn't it? Points have been at a premium throughout this game. So you have to wonder, is this going to be too much for them to overcome? A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good. And that pushes the lead up to 11.
the kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Start the drive. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Coming up on a second and six. Now back to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try to get the ball back again. Now a handoff as they run left side. Bulldozes past him. Touchdown, LA! A great effort there. 61 yards. And the Rams have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, that is a running back who is not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. Yeah, and this is one of the best runs you'll see. A lot of times on these long touchdowns, you'll see he gets into the end zone untouched, but not here. He fought his way through contact, and it barely even registered. He just continued down the field all the way to the end zone. That's caught, and he will get into the end zone as a two-point conversion is successful, and the lead is down to a field goal here in the fourth. I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call, and he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion, and now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and ten. Start the drive with a give to Foreman. He'll have a first down past the 40. And finally brought down right at the midfield stripe. 72 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Oh, that's one to warm the heart. 
hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. On second down now, Foreman, and he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. They'll run on first down. Foreman, and he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive game, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Lee out of the gun. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a first down in field goal range already. On first down, Foreman. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. They'll keep it on the ground. Foreman, and he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. Someone's been having a good game so far. And you know something? A lot has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, 
a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game. No turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks every